Us mountain bikers are spoiled for choice with different bikes for different genres these days. Mmm, very true, Anna. But if we had to choose just one genre of bike to ride forever, <gasps> what would it be? Ooh, could it be the Enduro bike? Mmm, well, there's only one way to find out. Stay tuned, everybody. Spin the wheel. things first give us a big old like and subscribe if you want more enduro content like this in the future mm, but anna we find ourselves here mm. at the wonderful canuga bike park in north carolina to answer the question can the enduro bike be the only bike that you have but there's a few things to think about isn't there mm, should we explore some of the pros and cons let's have a look but what is an enduro bike exactly they tend to have long suspension travel just below downhill bikes with around 160 to 180 mils of travel. 29er wheels are typical, but mixed wheel sizes are becoming more commonplace. Now, 12 speed drivetrains, dropper seat posts, and thicker tires are also pretty standard. We also see head angles of around 63 degrees, which is much slacker than trail or cross country, but not as slack as downhill. These bikes are designed specifically for enduro racing, which means they need to be fast on time descents, but they also need to be pedaled back up. If you love challenging terrain and you're all about the descent rather than smashing up climbs, then the Enduro bike might be for you, especially if you can't decide between a downhill bike and a trail bike, because the Enduro sits quite nicely in between. It's capable of tackling downhill descents, but it can still ride up the fire road afterwards. Anna, some valid pros and very good ones in there, but what about the cons? What if you are thinking, an enduro bike is for me. There are some downsides to it. Look, an XC Whippet it is not. These things are not designed as such to be lightweight race bikes. So if you're thinking of going far and going fast, then it's not the one for you. They can also be a little bit heavy, you know, although they're made of carbon, the big heavier wheels, the tires, and all the extra chunky suspension and stuff adds up. So you are carting around extra weight there as well. And the geometry, whilst it is comfortable, it's not the most efficient. So again, kind of goes back to looking at like that XC bike. If you want that racy position, you're getting nice and low and going out for hours and days on end even, the Enduro bike won't be that one. Enduro bikes tend to have stronger frames, burlier components, even thicker, wider, tougher tires because they need to withstand really technical, aggressive terrain. For that reason, they can actually be more durable. You're right, Anna, but there's a flip side to that as well. Because of the type of terrain that you are hammering them down, and trust me, I've <laughs> hammered my fair share of rear wheels, right? Yeah. I know, not ideal. But because of that, they almost require more maintenance and you can actually go through parts more often because of what it's designed for. Just that heavy, hardcore, big mountain riding, tires wear out quicker or prone to puncturing potentially, wheels get battered, all the complicated suspension and linkage. So suspension might need servicing a little more often, bearings replaced, things like that. It all adds up. So it's something to worth bear in mind. Right, I'm going to start with the cons this time, oh, Rich, because right. obviously an enduro bike isn't the best climbing bike out there. It can be quite heavy, which means it's arduous uphill, isn't it, obviously? And that sort of slack geometry means it can wander around a bit and feel a bit sluggish, especially on a technical climb, I'd hmm. say. Yeah, all right, you're negative, Nelly. Look, <laughs> let me hit you with some pros, because the fact that an enduro bike can still climb well is a pro, right? Yeah. So it's one up on a downer bike. Ah, oh, for sure. And they've got, you know, these days clever suspension linkages and kinematics means that Bob isn't there like they used to be You're bouncing right. around up and down. Yeah. So, you know, it's it can still climb. All right, it's not going to be an XC whip it, but it can still get up there. All right, then show me. Come on. <laughs> The long, low and slack treatment of what modern day enduro bikes have been given can mean that they can feel a little bit sluggish when they're going quite slow. And also when it gets a little bit twitchy and tight through the trees, then maybe the handling isn't quite there as well, unfortunately. And that's not really gonna help you. It's not gonna feel like a nice nimble trail bike. Yeah, maybe, but that geometry that doesn't feel quite right when it's pointed up will feel great when it's pointed down. 
It will make you feel more confident on technical terrain like this and on descents, and it may up your skills, up your confidence, and that'll just up your speed. Winning. Oh, we oui, indeed. <laughs> so then, Anna, should an enduro bike be someone's only bike? What are we thinking? Oh, I mean, obviously there's pros and cons. We've just explored that, but every bike's going to have trade-offs. So uh, why not? I would. Yeah, do you know what? I think I would as well. I think if I was choosing one, the enduro bike can literally do it all. So I think it is. I think it's the one I'd go for too. Yeah, but I want to know what these guys mm, think, yes. Rich. Join in the debate and let us know in the comments below. <laughs> See ya.